Definitely yes. Can you, how can you explain that? How does it happen? How does it get repaid? The social status of society, the behavior okay. pattern of society gets affected or impacted no. by the literacy of the teacher. Yes. Can you elaborate? Yes, sir, definitely. Since you say yes, you are. Uh, yes, sir, definitely. Uh, the coming of uh, Albay Camus inside outsider in the Western literature, it was uh, marked as an advent of ex existentialism, also in the uh, life philosophy of the West also. And uh, the Marx, Marx uh, Das Capital or Communist Manifesto was seen as the beginning of communism. And even in Marathi literature, the novels like Brahman Kanya by Sridhar Venkatesh Ketkar, it was seen as a major trigger towards social change, especially in terms of the highest caste among Hindus. Right. If a person is literate, will it be correct to take him educated? Is there a correlation between education and literacy? See, everybody is talking. Yes. Sarva Shiksha Abhiya. Everybody should be literate. Person being literate, will he be educated also? Or there is a combination of different qualities in education and literacy? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we are very much focusing on literacy today, but not on education as such. Uh, for example, uh, according to a NASCOM survey, 25% of the engineers that are uh, passed out every year, they are utterly unemployable. 25 of them have some meager uh, vocational training and 50% of them uh, can be put into employment with some vocational training. So this kind of education is emphasizing more on literacy than education. More on uh, um, employability rather than in uh, moral values or teach, teaching as such. So you can say Salman Khan, Sanjay Dhan, Shah Rukh Khan, they are all literate people. Excellent command over English and everything. Can we call them educated? The way they kill the people sleeping on the path, the way they go and do all illegal activity, the way they keep the weapons which are not supposed to be with them. Yes, sir. So, if you see education, mm -hmm. it creates an overall personality. Yes, sir. Can you elaborate on this? Uh, definitely, sir. Considering your uh, the things as you said, uh, these people cannot be said to be as educated, but um, uh, as Swami Vivekananda had uh, said, that education is the um, manifestation of perfection already in man. So it is towards the betterment of the self within, him, within himself or herself that, that should be uh, motivated, that should be guided towards betterment and education is uh, education should be targeted towards... You made an excellent observation about the unemployability of engineers. Yes, yes. Very, very... I was, I was admiring your comprehension. Thank you. Tell us something about one issue. A good number of engineers, IT experts, are getting uh, involved in terrorist activities all over the world, many of them, and India at least. What could be the reason for this? Sir, the engineering yes. graduate, the IT graduate, is getting inclined towards terrorism, violence, and radicalism. Why is it happening? Sir, uh, uh, as you said, that the changing profile of terrorism or the terrorists themselves is basically a root, uh, I mean, the outcome of are less focused on the software of dismantling software of terrorism rather than hardware of terrorism. We are emphasizing more on hardware of terrorism. The software itself is ideology and brainwashing. If we impart good education and good uh, moral values through education and teachings, and uh, then it could be simpler. So therefore, in your view, is there a need to change the curriculum of engineering uh, stream? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How would it help? So education essentially uh, imbibes in a human being the sense of empathy. The empathy teaches a human being to consider for others and to be human, uh, to be humane and uh, with human humility. So the present education is somewhere lack, lagging behind or lacking uh, in these values or imparting these values. It is said that the biggest challenge to America's security, national security is going to come from lack of education in 2017. Can you comment on this statement? Uh, I have somewhere, somewhere there. Yes, what are the apprehensions? How will lack of education impact the national security of USA? In what form? 
Uh, in your view, don't worry about it. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to uh, refer to a recent documentary I have say, uh, seen in, uh, and on Nancio. It said the percentage of population getting drug addicted in the West, especially in the USA, is uh, increasing and at a very alarming state, yeah, alarming rate. So this guy, such kind of youth culture and such kind of uh, apathy towards society is definitely not going to serve the purposes in terms of uh, national security for US. So I think uh, I, I, I personally know only this side of the issue. What will happen to Marathi side this mm, Sir, so the scenario today is uh, very unfortunate uh, that uh, Dr. Anand Yadav has resigned and some of the sections of Maharashtra Sahitya Parishad is uh, supporting him to take back his seat but the Vakri sect is uh, vehemently opposing his position as the, as the president of Sahitya Sambhala so the scene is totally unclear as of now All that you said is the reason I asked the question what will happen to Marathi Sahitya Sambhala you haven't answered that you told me the background. Yes, sir. Sir, the, uh, two, there are two possibilities. One suggested by the Vakri sect, that is to establish the image of Santa Dukara as the president of uh, Sahitya Sammela. And the other uh, is that let Professor Mother Hatakananga later to be the president this time also. He was the president last year. So the, these are the two possible. Uh, there is one more possibility, which is already been discussed. What is that? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I'm not aware. Who contested election along with Anand Yadav? Mm. Sir, may I guess? Is it uh, Meena Prabhu? Did she? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember. It. Okay, I remind you that Shankar Sada contested. Yes, sir. And now he claims that the second one. Yes. Sir. Isn't that the rule for election in India? The second one in the majority. Is so he claims, he says election happened and if he is resigning, it means I am the one who got votes next to Anand Yadav. So I should become. What's your opinion on this? So I think the issues should be resolved through discussion and if Dr. Anand Yadav and the opposing uh, party is also supporting this claim, then he should decide over the side of what about Vishwas, Marathi Vishwa Sahitya Sammelan? Sir, the Marathi Vishwa Sahitya Sammelan recently uh, was uh, occurred at uh, San Jose and it is going to be uh, a biannual program uh, and it, it is aimed at taking the Marathi literature at the global stage. So, it is supporting the course. There was controversy over that also. Why? So the controversy all uh, was based on the, the issue or the controversy, uh, the issue of debate was of whether to have two Sahitya Sammelan or to have just a single one. Okay, that was not the controversy. Controversy was basically even whether to have Sahitya Sammelan overseas. Yes, sir. You don't seem to have gone through it carefully. I'm sorry sir, I don't uh, know the much, much details about it. Who was, who was the president of that site this year? I'm sorry sir, I'm, I don't recall it right now. What is Varkari Sampradaya? Sir, so, uh, Varkari Sampradaya is um, a, a site in Maharashtra which is, uh, which uh, Find its, it, which finds its roots in Bhakti movement and it was propagated right from Sant Adinath and it is also termed as the continuation of Nata Sampradaya and Sant Nyaneshwar and Sant Tukara they, because of them the Vakri sect flourished and there, through their text some pros and points Are they in politics in Maharashtra? Uh, uh, sorry sir, I, I didn't get your question Are they Vakaris? Mm -hmm into politics in Maharashtra. So some of the Vakaris or the leaders, so-called leaders of Vakaris, they are in politics of Maharashtra. For example, Bhavan Rao Paspati. Because earlier referred to the Dalit Sahitya Sammelan. 
Ma'am, partly it still continues because uh, we are still partly traditional and the traditionality is still deep rooted in our mind. And for example, the, the Marathi film that recently came, uh, Sanayi Chavadi, it raised the same issue and it's the prevailing condition of society. And uh, I think it's still a reality, if not totality. And what should be done to overcome it? Uh, again, the, uh, imparting gender equality uh, through education would be the best uh, solution to this problem. Do you think abiding by international law uh, puts some kind of a practical limitation on the sovereignty of a nation? Uh, it definitely puts, yes. Because... It does? Yes. How? Uh, for example, we signing uh, Indo-US nuclear deal. Uh, we were obliged or we were required to sign, uh, for example, uh, USA can now put pressure on us for, in terms of signing CTBT. For example, Obama is currently doing the same thing. Uh, or, uh, 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 so, such, such like measures or such like uh, pressures are, are definitely going to come. So, in, uh, while we are signing any treaty, international treaty, uh, it is bound to uh, invites some kind of rules and regulations. So it definitely puts restraints on sovereignty of a nation. Is the signing by compulsion or by choice? Uh, it, it, it's by choice and it's by self-imposed so compulsion. we choose to be affected? Uh, partly we can say so, but partly it's the conditions prevailing in the country in terms of shortage of electricity and shortage of power. And it led to us to sign the India Supreme then what do you have to say about India's stand on the CTBT? Uh, India, right from the beginning, um, has adopted the policy of no first use and uh, not nuclear power use for the peace, pur peace process and peace purpose and for the uh, power generation. So I don't think India really needs to worry or avoid going against uh, it, in terms of signing on uh, CTBT or not. Who do you think is the guardian of international law? Uh, it is supposedly UN. But uh, currently the scenes are not so clear that even UN does not seem to have any uh, major control over everybody and uh, every nation as such. Could you name one nation? Uh, yes ma'am, for example, uh, China in terms of human rights violation, Russia, in terms of uh, its uh, various advents, adventures in, for example, recently in the Arctic. And such like things are definitely going against the principle or the basic uh, fundamentals of, uh, or the spirit of United Nations. Uh, Madam, Jeevan India philosophy is a science of life and art of harmonious living. It is uh, propagated by Sri Vamana Pai, who is a philosopher and philanthropist from Mumbai. And, uh, what made you learn it? Um, yes, ma'am. I, I I went through uh, some failures during my graduation, and I, I was devastated in terms of. Uh, I, I was totally. Uh, uh, I became pessimistic towards the world, and I, I was not finding uh, any way out. But the motto of Jeevan Vidya philosophy attracted me towards it that you are the architect, architect of your own destiny. How oh, you were introduced to it? Uh, now I was introduced to it by my friend. Okay, it has helped you. Yes, definitely. And you say practicing, so exactly what do you do? Uh, practicing means I uh, I learn the codes, I learn the theories, I learn the principles of Jivan Vidya and try to implement in my life. For example, uh, Jivan Vidya says love work and bless all and you will be blessed according to the laws of nature. So I am trying to implement it in my life. You said your friend uh, introduced you to this subject concept. Yes. Did he also do the same yeah, sort of experience? Yes, sir, definitely. So you think that the correlation between whether people suffer from similar uh, uh, experiences, they come together? Uh, definitely, you can say. Let's take this philosophy further up. What makes Pakistan so indispensable to both 
USA and China. Why is Pakistan important to USA and China both? So the reasons can be multiple. The first being the geopolitical status or the position of Pakistan. Then also the strategic importance of Pakistan in terms of mediation in Central Asia, in Middle East, and even the role of Pakistan or the presumed role of Pakistan to be played in, in the future, uh, which is seen to be advantageous to this time. Let's take it a little further. What makes a nation superpower? The first and the foremost thing is the self-belief. The nation should believe in itself that yes, we are a superpower. The second thing is the economic, social, cultural and technology, scientific uh, inventions and scientific development of a country leads to the country to be a superpower. Has Japan ever said they are a superpower? Mm -hmm. said the ambition of a nation, or the willpower of a nation. What prevents Japanese to become a superpower? Sir, uh, up to my knowledge, I think um, Japan is lagging behind in terms of military. <coughs> so, um, the NATO forces or the USA is still protecting Japan in a very major sense. Can India hope to be superpower? Yes, definitely. So what are we the requirement to fulfill before we stay or claim to be superpower? So I think the first and foremost thing India should do is that India should stop being an apologetic power. It should start believing in itself and being a, uh, in its behavior and in, in its steps taken. It should seem like a superpower. Is it the colonial experience which we have gone through and our leadership today which is all about 70 or 80 around that time? Their experience making us apologetic? Uh, partly yes, sir. Because it has um, deep roots in our mentality and the ideologies. Also. You have very good handwriting. I must compliment you. And yes, Who do you attribute this to? Yourself, your mother, your teacher or your father? Uh, Who sir. has made the impact on your good handwriting? So my entire school, or in my 8th standard, I was in a school which was totally emphasizing on hand. Uh, on Who used writing. to correct your homework? Your father or your mother? So, uh, my mother. Okay. Uh, yes, definitely. Why did you get attracted to civil services as a career option? Uh, Ma'am, civil services uh, fascinates me a lot because the kind of power, the kind of uh, security and the most importantly, the job satisfaction it provides to me. It uh, it is so fascinating for me to get attracted to it. How did you get attracted to it? Is there somebody in your family or your friend circle? Uh, no, ma'am. Seeing the Madhikari sir over here and seeing many of the IS, uh, Marathi IS uh, officers doing well in the service also, they attracted me and I felt that yes, this is my choice of service. What does doing well in the civil service mean? No, and I want to partly intervene. Yes, please. Over here, who the hell is Dharmadikari? Sir, to me, Dharmadikari, sir, uh, is a kind of a principle or a set of principles which uh, which shows a path, kind of a path for building up a professional career with national integrity and national character. You know, the man himself resigned, could not continue to work with civil service. What is he teaching you? So for the noble cause, uh, if one steps down and achieves or aims at achieving uh, higher, he himself was IS, he quit, so ran away from responsibilities, now he is teaching, is he a hypocrite? No sir, definitely not, because the noble purpose he is serving today of building the youth or the professional in IS, of the IS service, it's tremendous and uh, you are giving so much of inspiration and motivation to the youth and that speaks volumes. And earlier Recently we also heard he joined politics something. Yes. Doesn't come at us. You want to join politics something? Um, I, I have to think over it. But and that too, you are uh, the very regional uh, communal uh, party that beats up non marathi Sir, I see it the other way around. If he join, if you join uh, Shiv Sena, it's, it's not you. It's for the bet. It's your intervention in daily that is going on. Okay, sir. So, if he joins Shiv Sena, then it's for the betterment of Shiv Sena and not he getting the routinized politician. So I think Shiv Sena needs a diplomatic brain as him, and it is going to select it.
Yeah, sorry, I mean, you were telling Now you said that seeing these officers doing well, what does that mean to you, doing well? Doing well in civil services? Uh, doing well again is simply put. To simply put it, uh, in terms of um, two words, is excellent and being creative. Being excellent and being creative speaks uh, uh, everything. For being a good or doing well in IS. Being creative. Yes, being creative or being innovative. Okay. And so who so are these officers who have, uh, you know, inspired you? Officers from Maharashtra, can you name a few other than Tarmati Kalisa? Uh, yes, ma'am. For example, uh, Mr. Ajit Sushi in Haryana is doing a very good work for the uh, uneducated children of factory workers. He, he has started sugar schools in the Haryana so as to make the children educated uh, who were uh, who uh, wouldn't have got education as such. He started the education in the factories, uh, the schools in the factories itself. So he is one of my inspirations and um, there are many such. He is an able eyes officer welcome in Maharashtra. If he is competent, his capability very high, he is able administration, administrator, sorry, I beg pardon. Is he welcome in Maharashtra? Mm, the seat today can, I can say, uh, yes, he is. Why it is allowed is one of our best officers are not being allowed to serve in Maharashtra. Except that they had first, see, thereafter they never came back to Maharashtra. What do you think about it? Mm, I'm sorry sir, I don't know uh, each and everything behind the scenes, but... I'd just like to take it a little further. Uh, in the eyes of the common man, including me, the civil services is today characterized by corruption, nepotism, political interference. It's no longer a civil servant. They are in fact, like the British rulers in a different shape and color and scale. What do you want to say? Maps, uh, there can be two sides of a coin. Uh, I may emphasize on the brighter side of the coin, but yes, the darker side of the coin is, is still uh, sets a gloomy picture before us. And as you said, the corruption, nepotism, favoritism, and such like things are so prevalent in the uh, society and in the uh, civil services. And that, that is why the need of uh, proper education and imparting so, uh, social and moral values, ethics through education, and the institutions like I, as I quoted earlier, Chanakya Mandal, to build the professionals with national character and integrity, social integrity. They are very necessary. So I think uh, the root, roots are do, uh, deep rooted in the system itself, the educational system. And what is the special quality you are going to bring to the table as a bureaucrat? Uh, Ma'am, I won't be doing anything special, but uh, I'll be doing uh, everything uh, in a normal way, but with a special kind of thinking or innovation, if possible. Who is the greatest living mathematician? Mm -hmm. So uh, I haven't known any, uh, many number of uh, mathematicians as such, but I guess the recent Apple Prize winners, Thompson and Tex, might be claimed to be as the finest mathematicians today. Why? Uh, so, because I have gone through, uh, not, not into deeper, but I have gone, uh, scanned through his contribution uh, in the probability and the, uh, his theory or his uh, invention uh, or his theorem of large deviation in probability is, I think it's ex uh, exemplary and it's a good contribution to that. Have you heard of Roger Penrose? Uh, uh, yes, sir. I have heard. Is, are there any unsolved theorems in maths? Yes, definitely there are many of them. One example. Uh, for example, it's the uh, a problem of whether um, prime numbers in a Fibonacci sequence are infinite or not is one of the. It is unsolved. Yes, it is unsolved. If I say that it's infinite, I solve the problem. <laughs> no, sir, because uh, that's the way Ramanujan used to solve the problems, but. Uh, the proof uh, needs to be given and scientists or the mathematicians are still not able to put it into a proof, uh, a definite scientific proof, mathematical proof to prove that these are the infinite numbers. So they haven't come up with uh, any definite formula or a theorem as such to prove that there are infinite runs in the Fibonacci sequence. There is a thing called Gordel's theorem. 
And I'm sorry, sir, I haven't come across it. You stop all your relationship with men? Uh, partly, yes, sir, because I lost that because of UPSC. Okay. All further new development in Marathi Natya Sangi has stopped. Yes, sir. Okay. What are the reasons? Sir, uh, the major reason being the advent of technological uh, entertainment tools. For example, TV was seen to be the major blow to Natya Sangeet earlier and nowadays radios, uh, the pop music and the remix, albums, new albums coming up and such like things are definitely going to hamper Natya Sangeet in a way. And in terms of drama, uh, people are not uh, so patient or, to or tolerant to listen to the actor singing uh, on the stage. So these are the uh, reflections of changing mind mindsets or mentalities of people. Has that happened in say London and New York? Uh, London is, and New York are uh, definitely uh, very much immune to the, uh, this change because uh, there's uh, that tradition of musical stage or stage music seems to be still intact and still prevalent over there. So, so what stops Marathi stage from continuing the Marathi tradition? So I think the... See the reasons you said make no sense. You said all TV and all. Western countries have more TV, more channels, more. Still their drama scene is extremely vibrant. You are saying not tolerant with an actor singing. Who is saying that in modern times there should be a six hour drama? Why can't there be two hour drama? Yes sir, there can be and there are still dramas but they are the versions of, uh, newer versions of the past uh, dramas only. So there are new... So new creativity has stopped? Yes sir. Why? That's what I'm asking. Sir. And no reason that you are saying makes sense. Sir, I think the first and foremost thing that comes to my mind is the unmindful imitation of uh, the western culture. So... In fact, it was imitation of western culture. Then the drama should be rich and productive, colourful. Is, is that the scene? Sir, so, uh, I go deeper uh, over here because uh, even in the literary stream, uh, literary uh, streams, uh, we have borrowed the concepts more so uh, and not we have invented over here. So these are all the borrowed concepts. So they are not um, imbibed into the minds of the society and uh, society is not still ad getting adapted to the new changes. So Who these are more so I'm sorry, sir. What is Darfur crisis? So Darfur crisis. Darfur is a region in Sudan which is. Uh, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I recollect it right now. Uh, Mohammed Bashir is, sent, uh, is seen to have committed genocide and uh, serious crimes against humanity. So, International Court, Court of Justice is having. Uh, so he is the president of Liberia right now. I'm sorry, sir. I don't recollect. Who is the president of EU? I'm sorry, sir. What is Treaty of Maastricht? Uh, sir, the Treaty of Maastricht is the treaty responsible for the formation of uh, EU as an organization. What about EU constitution? Sir, EU constitution is the constitution that binds the European countries which are the members of EU uh, into a single political uh, entity and it uh, sets parameters and uh, recently in the issue or in debate because uh, of some countries not signing the constitution. Thank you.